Well, why don't you settle down and save your energy? You've been up all night. Oh, losing a night's sleep is not the most important thing in my life right now. Finding my sister is. And where is Calvin? Why is he taking oh, so long? Calm down, will you? He's on his way. We've done everything we can now until he gets you. Why don't you have some more coffee? Huh? The only person in this household who has slept through all this is Adam. He's going to wonder where Jody is at breakfast. What are you going to tell him? I don't know. I'll think of something. Maybe I'll just tell him that she had an early call at the studio. Hmm. That's another thing. I've got to call Geraldine. No, why don't you wait on that until we see what Calvin has to suggest? There he is. Yes, Oscar. Yes, we are. Yeah, thanks. Oh, God, Miles, it is the waiting that is so awful. I just don't think I can take this another minute. All right, calm down. At least we know she's not in the hospital. We've checked all of them. I know it, but I just can't help thinking that she's in some kind of trouble. Hi. Hello, Hello Miles. Good morning. Hello, oh, Nicole. Oh, Calvin, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, I'm sorry about all this, but listen. The first thing you have to do is tell me absolutely every single thing you know. Well, we know that Jody had an appointment at 6 o'clock yesterday. Yeah? Where? At the Saracen Head Bookshop. Oh, that's old man Keith's place downtown. Uh-huh. With whom? We don't know. She got this crazy kind of letter. In the mail? No, actually, it was hand-delivered. It had little letters that had been cut out of the newspaper, pasted together to form a message. Okay, is it around here anyway? No. Fortunately, no. She took it with her. Do you remember what it said? Uh, no, I don't remember verbatim, well, it but said it just... something like, if you want to know more about the portrait, come to the Saracen Head Bookshop tomorrow alone at 6 o'clock. And if anything was going to arouse Jody's interest, it would be something about that portrait. Yes, Gavin's constantly talking about that. Well, I just didn't think it was a good idea for her to go alone, so I made her promise that she would get Cliff to go with her. And he didn't go? No, Jody left Sid's yesterday afternoon without Cliff, and nobody has seen her or heard from her since. Miles and I went over there to the bookshop last night, but it was closed tight. So we've just been up all night waiting for her to call, but we haven't heard anything. So we called you. Okay, it's a good thing you did. You two just try to stay calm. I'll see if I can get any information on this. Can I use your phone? Oh, yeah, sure. please. Jody, get ready. We have a plane to catch. Say it's a surprise to see you at breakfast so early in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I'm sorry. Would you care for more coffee? Yes, please. Something more to eat? Oh, no, no. I could barely finish my plate. I had to force it down this morning. Mm-hmm. I see. Maybe I will just finish this little piece of toast, though. Uh, yes, I know how you hate waste. <laughs> I must say, this house seems to be filled with gloom and doom this morning. Oh, I can't help it, Geraldine. I've been sitting out here thinking about the wonderful summer that I was going to have. Walks in the woods, and I'd finally get to use the bridal path. Do you realize that I have three riding habits I have never worn? I was thinking maybe I'd even buy a horse. Yes, if you were going to use the bridal path, I suppose a horse would be an advantage, wouldn't it? And my roses, my beautiful roses, they take so much attention, they'll probably die without my supervision. Raven, you know perfectly well that Carlos slaves over those roses every year. All you do is stand around with a little wicker basket and a pair of garden shears and clip. That's not true. Last year at this time, Last I year at this time, you were too busy thinking about getting married than growing roses. Oh, don't remind me. The only thing I have to look forward to this summer is that dingy little hotel room where they probably don't even have geraniums. Now, that's utter nonsense. You heard what I told Spencer yesterday. Your home is with me now. If you object to a residential suite at the Monticello Arms, then we'll find a little house someplace, or an apartment in town, if you prefer. In any case, 
I dare say you're not going to suffer any hardship. I won't, will I? I'll just be a poor relation, and I'm not even a real relation. I am poverty-stricken. Do you realize that? Oh, that's absurd. You're trying to make yourself sound like the poor little match girl, and you're not anything of the sort. I just realized something. I might even have to go to work. Oh, the ultimate degradation. Well, why not? I work. Well, you don't have to. Besides, what would I do? I'm, I'm not trained for anything. Well, let me see. You could take in laundry. That is not one bit funny. I am in a desperate situation, and you know it. Raven, I'm sorry. I'm not at all amused by your situation. Believe me. I know that you've been through a terrible ordeal these past few weeks. And I'm deeply sympathetic. You know that. I'm just trying to tell you that things are not as bad as you think they are. I'm trying to show you not to look back, but to look forward. Erase the past and think of the future. The future. All I can think about was what I had. What I had when I was Mrs. Schuyler Whitney. I was a queen. Now I'm nothing. Can I get you something, sir? No, nothing, thank you. You're late. You've kept me waiting 15 minutes. I had important things to do this morning, Nora. Oh, and I'm the least important person on your list, is that it? You must have some very heavy responsibilities now, Spencer. Could we make this quick? I do have some other things to do, and like you said, I am running late. Lucky you. I have nothing to do and nothing to look forward to tomorrow. Not only being unemployed, I might get arrested any minute. If you're still worried about Raven coming after you with the law, you can forget about it. The lady's very busy with much more important problems than prosecuting her maid. Private secretary. If you insist. Anyway, I'm not just worried about Raven Whitney's revenge. Something else I have to contend with uh, because of something that I've done. Something tells me you're about to make a confession. I don't know if I want to hear. Well, it's just a silly old thing I did the other night. Just a joke. You know, some people have no sense of humor. I bet I'll die laughing. So what'd you do? Well, I went to the Kavanaugh penthouse just for a visit. The only person there was the housekeeper. You know that miserable Mrs. Goodman. Well, I, I locked her on the terrace, and I left. It's very funny. The really funny part is that she has this really terrible fear of heights. If you could have seen the expression on her face. Nora, that's kind of a sick joke. You know, the lady might have had a heart attack or something. Well, it wasn't that bad. Anyway, you never know what some people are going to do. I didn't think about it at the time, but the Kavanaugh's could really make trouble for me now. I say it was highly possible, considering what you did to them in the past. Oh! Kavanaugh's. Oh, no. Just tried to uh, break up their marriage, that's all. Oh, that. So, now you're in another mess and you're looking for a way out, right? You have such a clear head, Spencer. Nora, I've told you before, the only real solution for you is to get out of town, start someplace new. I mean, you're such a gifted troublemaker. You should really go to a big city where you could have some real challenges. Right. I have to get out of this dumpy town. But you see, I have a, a little problem with money. Haven't we had this discussion before? You've got a job. You've got security. Listen, if you could just loan me a couple of thousand dollars, I could go somewhere else. Nora, it'd be worth twice that much. All right, all right. Just give me a little time. We'll see what I can do. That is wonderful. You're so generous. I always knew you're a good guy deep down. Just like you always knew Gunther was a good guy. Good morning, boss. Oh. oh, I see you finally shaved that magnificent paint of yours, Gunther. Yeah, just like you asked me to. Well, well, well. I uh, thought your money wasn't available to you at this time. Well, uh, one has to be resourceful, Gunther. Mm -hmm. Well, where did this little beauty come from? I decided to deliver it. I leased it with an option to buy, which reminds me, that's what we're going to do now. We're going to exercise another one of my options. Yes, sir. Send him on up, would you? Thanks. Well, maybe now we'll find out something. Yes, now we'll see what Cliff has to say for himself. If it wasn't for him, none of this oh, would Oh, now, honey, happened. don't start blaming Cliff for Jody's disappearance. She wanted it that way. He couldn't very well insist that he go with her. She didn't want him to, could he? Look, do we, do we have some breakfast to give him? No. 
Mrs. Goodman isn't up yet, and I just don't feel like dealing with pots and pans. Hi, Cliff. Come on in. Hi, I'm sorry. Come on, Cliff. Hi, Cliff. We have some coffee. Do you want any? Uh, no, thank you. So, that's the portrait that Jody was so excited about. It looks exactly like her. Oh, is there any word yet? No, there isn't. We've just been filling Calvin in on the details. So, all we can do now is wait. Look, I, uh, I think this is my fault. I feel responsible. Oh, no, nobody is blaming you, Cliff. Believe me. Look, you've got to tell us absolutely everything that happened yesterday. You and Mitzi were with Jody at Sid's, weren't you? Yes. And what time was that? It was late in the afternoon, about 5.45, I think. Okay, exactly what is it she said to you last time you saw her? Well, uh, Jody showed me the note that she received. It, it was a, a funny note with uh, letters cut out from magazines, and I, and I laughed at it. I, I thought that stuff only happened on television or in detective well, stories. Come on, stick to the point, please. Oh, well, um, well, the note said that if she wanted to know more about the portrait, she had to go to the Saracen Head bookstore, and, and it told her where and when, and she wanted to find out all she could about the portrait. And she was intent on going alone. She was adamant. She felt that if I went with her, that her contact would be scared off, and then she wouldn't know any more about the portrait than she did before. You see, she told us that you were going to go with her. That's why we felt so relaxed about letting her keep the appointment. She wouldn't let you go with her, and now no one has heard from her since. That crazy kid. Have you told Gavin yet? Oh, no. He'd be crawling the walls. I'm not going to call him until I have something definite. <sighs> what a mess. This whole thing wouldn't have happened if I would have acted faster. Now, what is that supposed to mean, if you had done what faster? Well, when Jody left Sid's, I wasted about ten minutes wrestling with my indecision, and then the thought of her alone just nagged at the back of my brain. So I ran out of Sid's, and I got down to the bookstore, but she was gone. Uh, I talked to the old man there, and he said that there might have been a woman in there that looked like Jody, and then she talked to a middle-aged woman. And then they left together, maybe, but he wasn't sure. And did he give you any kind of description about what this middle-aged woman might have looked like? Oh, no, Calvin. He was nearsighted. He could barely recognize me. I think it's a chronic condition. Well, that doesn't give you much to go on, does it, Calvin? Well, we can't exactly put out an APD on just any middle-aged woman. I guess the best thing for me to do is uh, go down to the bookstore and look around myself. Look, uh, try to keep the phones free. I'll call you as soon as I find out something. Thank you, Calvin. Stop worrying. Nothing's going to happen to you. We're just going on a trip, that's all. You're not in any danger. <laughs> I'm being kidnapped and you're telling me I'm not in any danger. I'm not a fool, you know. I thought about this thing, Viva, even if you haven't. I can assure you, we've thought about it very carefully. I don't think so. How do you plan on getting me out of here, into the airport, onto a plane, without attracting any attention? The minute I walk out of this store, I could start yelling my head off. I'm telling you now, you won't. You better keep your mouth shut or else you're in deep trouble. Now you're threatening me. Yes. It's the best I can do in so little time. Well, it will have to do. Please, you go now. I could get into very big trouble. Please, get out. I haven't heard from Pietro yet. We will go when the time comes to go. Right. Not any sooner. Assume that this is all for me? Yes, it is. This is your traveling gear. And this is all I'm taking? Not even extra clothes? When we get to Eden, you will have everything that you want. I promise. Get her! Ah! Jody, we want to be nice to you. But we will hurt you if we have to. on the lookout. Mm -hmm. I have my eye on an early Matisse. Now, I won't make an offer until I'm absolutely sure it's available. Oh, and by the way, Hamilton, I thought I'd let you know I'm going on a little trip. Uh, no, no, just a brief vacation. Well, I can't say just when I'll be back, actually. Uh, feel free to call Grace if you need anything. Right, Hamilton. Goodbye. I don't know why you have to go on this trip at all and on such absurdly short notice. I know, my dear. It is inconsiderate, to say the least. There are half a dozen things yet to do, and I won't have time for any of them now. Daddy, I'm frightened. You haven't been there in so many years. What could possibly be so important? What could they want to do to you? Oh, I suppose they think they have to dish out a little discipline every now and then to keep people on the straight and narrow. Or just to remind us of their authority. Well, whatever reason it is, I don't like it. It sounds like serious trouble to me. No, you mustn't worry, my dear. Remember, I have a number of loyal friends over there who know how well I've served their interests over the years in this country. They know 
they couldn't have built their enterprise with such success without me. I don't care how much they know about your contributions over the years. There is something decidedly ominous about suddenly sending for you without me warning. It's time, and Mr. Endicott. I know what it is. It's you, isn't it? It's your fault. You're the one who's done all this. You murdered those people, and now my father has to pay for what it. What slap are you in, Miss Endicott? That's all I allow. Let's go, Joseph. There's only one flight a week, you know. I can't afford to miss this one. committed here, a very serious crime involving millions of dollars. And as I also said, Mr. Whitney, we want to avoid a legal confrontation. Yes, but I may choose not to avoid it. I may choose to charge Mrs. Whitney with fraud. You wouldn't. You are his wife. You shared his secrets as well as his bed. Well, I didn't know the truth when we were married. I didn't find out that he was Jefferson Brand to... May I suggest that you allow Raven some time to herself now? Time to digest all this and, and then decide what steps to take. That's agreeable to me. Very well. But these steps better be taken soon. I'm tired of living like a pauper. I'll be in touch with you, Geraldine. Take care of it. I've lost everything. So I see. Am I to take it I'm terribly welcome here this morning? Quite the contrary, Mr. Whitney. Won't you please sit down? Thank you. If you'll excuse me. I am so sorry I can't offer you anything, but the servants have left the house like rats deserting the sinking ship. <laughs> Oh, that's quite all right. Actually, I don't need a thing. I just came by to pay my respects to you and Aunt Geraldine. To say how relieved I am. Whatever for? Well, my man Spencer tells me that you're going to cooperate in the transfer of my property. I had no choice, apparently. Hmm. Well, I just wanted to tell you that as long as you do continue to cooperate, and you don't offer any interference to my resuming control over what does belong to me, I'm willing to forego criminal charges against you. How nice and chivalrous. Mm -hmm. I just wanted you to know that uh, as long as you are out of my house and my life as soon as possible. I have already made arrangements to go. Good. Now, the next order of business is my attorneys and my accountants would like to have a complete picture of your finances. I know it's an unpleasant business, but it's necessary, as I'm sure you can appreciate. We need to know what personal wealth you brought to your marriage so that uh, there won't be any confusion when the transfer takes place. I'd hate to be responsible for you losing any of your own personal wealth. Well, I had been living on a trust fund that my daddy gave me. It barely paid for my toenail polish. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I wouldn't like you to know that the rule of this transfer is going to be what's yours is yours and what's mine is mine. Raven, Scott, are there... Uh, what? What's wrong? It's... Uh, <clears throat> Nothing really, just a, a momentary oh, shock. Oh, I, I, I think I know what this must be. Uh, has my driver just appeared at the door, by any chance? Uh, yes, that's it. I... Well, why don't you ask him to come out here, Joe? No, Scott, I, I don't really think this is the right time. Mm -hmm. 